Lake Baringo, one of the two freshwater lakes in the Rift Valley region of Kenya, located 286.3 kilometers from Kenya's capital, Nairobi, has risen over 46 inches since 2nd May 2020. A whole village is underwater. All the shops, markets, plus health centers and schools submerged. Approximately 3,000 families have been displaced so far. This is Soy Hotel, which was a favorite tourist destination for many. But today, the ruins are as devastating to the eye as they are to the person whose investment today lies under the water. Hi, uh, I can't believe that. Nelson Mandela said education would be the solution to problems that Africa faces today. However, for the students of Lake Baringo Secondary School, the narrative is different. Their school submerged. The UK High Commissioner to Kenya, Ms. Jane Marriott, flanked by Wanjiro Mathai, Vice President of the World Resource Institute and friend of COP26, visited the area to assess the devastating effects caused by the water rising and, in their words, The lake is, is, is beautiful but devastating. Um, you know, as the birds are coming to roost, the people have had to leave, the people have no homes. We've heard that 3,000 families have been displaced, uh, there's over six schools underwater, the crocodiles are swimming around. It's, it's beautiful but it's deadly. Um, and this is climate change at its most local. This is where uh, the actions that man and woman have taken has negatively impacted on our environment um, and people are suffering as a result and we have to take action. One of the things I've been very curious about is how over the last 10 years, this lake has been rising. As long as I can remember and across the Rift Valley, these lakes have been rising. What have, has been our response? What is the assessment of what that risk means? And projecting forward, forecasting, that's our job. That's what leaders are supposed to do. There's an adage that I love. It says, delay and pay, plan and prosper. We cannot continue to delay action. The UK government is, however, stepping up efforts to drive climate action in Kenya. And Ms. Marriott has affirmed the UK's commitment to providing international climate financing. President Kenyatta and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson in January agreed a, a strategic partnership uh, with five aspects, one of which is climate change. It's that important to us and to the UK and Kenya to work together on. The UK as a whole has now um, uh, committed 1.7 trillion uh, shillings, Kenyan shillings equivalent, to climate financing to try and help stop mitigate, support adaptability and resilience, but most of all long-term planning. We've known this lake here has had uh, flooding potential for over over a decade, um, where are the plans, how do we, how can we work together and support those? Wanjira Mathai has called on the government to be more proactive when it comes to planning on how best to handle such situations so as to ensure that community members are not caught unawares when such calamities strike. Researchers should be marshaled to begin to understand. Kenyan students, masters and PhDs should be trying to understand what's going on so that we can bring the best that Kenya has to offer. On top of that, of course, it's the master planning. We're looking at Lake Baringo today. We have Bogoria that's going through the same. Even Lake Trukana, we have Nakuru. All of these Rift Valley lakes are going through a phenomenon that we need to understand and we need to think ahead and also learn from other countries. We're not the only ones going through this. So what is the exchange happening inter Africa, intra Africa, and of course internationally beyond our continent? Further to this, the UK government, through partnerships with other stakeholders, is hosting a virtual summit dubbed Ambition Summit, which seeks to protect the most vulnerable communities and building on the leadership to drive forward climate policy clean energy and green finance. The Climate Ambition Summit is going to take place virtually 
that's because of COVID. Uh, next Saturday on the 12th, so Jamhori Day here as well. And uh, I think uh, the president has said that he will be able to participate. Um, and we, we want to see there the launch of the NDCs, the Nationally Determined Contributions. What is each country doing uh, to help tackle climate change? And of course, Kenya and a lot of the countries across this continent are in a position where they didn't contribute to climate change. It's not Africa's fault. It's not Kenya's fault. Um, but you are suffering the consequences here and that's why we as some of the Western nations want to work together and support in partnership to mitigate uh, and bring together uh, more resilient communities. James Owor, a community member and a former manager of the Roberts Camp, which has now been submerged, tells us about the situation on ground. We had uh, 20 staff working who unfortunately as at now they've lost their jobs. Um, there has been a, a big impact because um, if you look straight away at the camp and then over there, there used to be a center there. That center is also dying. The other lodge, Lake Baringo Club, is also closed due to the flooding of the lake. So the impact back to the community is that a lot of business are being closed and then the standard of poverty is going to be high because those people who had somewhere to depend on in terms of salaries have nothing at hand now. The deputy governor for Baringo County, Jacob Chekwonyi, has also put in his views on the situation being faced by the residents who live around Lake Baringo. We've really done a lot as a government. The situation here is really devastating. And uh, our people have lost livelihoods and our people also have lost businesses. Uh, as a county government, we've actually done mitigation. Those communities, those families who have been affected, we've been able to supply food items with other partners. The only thing they've done is maybe to partner with um, organizations like Red Cross to get people some few tents and maybe perhaps some food stuff which, as we are speaking now, that is completely finished. The deputy governor has also called on the national government and other partners to come in and help the situation. Our resource base cannot really allow us to uh, really address the problem to conclusion. Disaster response is centralized at the national government. Resources are called the national government. As county governments, we don't have. And therefore, we are really recommending that these disaster issues are less decentralized also, so that we can have uh, ways of planning, preparing, because this problem has been there for the last 10 years. The UK government will play host to the COP26 climate talks in 2021. And as a build-up to the climate talks, the UK government has set a series of activities to jumpstart conversations around climate talks. We launched the Climate Change Photography Competition, um, and this is to raise awareness. So Kenyans raising awareness within their own country um, as to the impact on climate change. So we're looking at nature-based solutions. We're looking at entries that cover uh, tech and innovation and what communities are doing to support each other. Uh, the entries are until the end of January. There is a prize. Uh, in fact, the top three entries, judged by a panel including uh, myself, P.S. Kiptu, uh, and Wanjira and Mathai, uh, will be uh, awarding three prizes of nearly 200,000 shillings each to the winning entries. With over 3,000 people currently displaced in this particular area, the only hopes are that better planning will be done to mitigate such adverse effects in the future. For Champs Media, I'm Felix Maringa.